Welcome to MEI Mechanics. We're on the topic Work, Energy and Power 1, Work and Energy, and this is video 1.5, Conservation of Energy. So we've already seen that the uh, gravitational energy lost um, when an object uh, falls through, through a height um, is equal to the kinetic energy gained in that process. Um, and these are both equal to the work done on the object by gravity. Okay, um, and so we can call this the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. In other words, the mechanical energy at the end of a process, the final mechanical energy, would be equal to the mechanical energy at the start of that process. Uh, but it's important to bear in mind that that's only when the only force that's doing any work is gravity. So here's an example where we might expect this to be the case. So a ball of mass 0.3 kilograms falling through a distance of 4 meters from rest. And the first thing we're asked to do here is to calculate the change in the potential energy. All right, and as we've already seen, that's just given by mgh. So that's 0.3, which is the mass, times g, which is 9.8 times the height, which in this case is 4 meters, uh, and that comes out as 11.76 joules. And really we should round. Now the next thing we're told is to assume that air resistance can be neglected, and as long as we assume that, then it's true to say that there are no other, um, no external forces acting, and so we know that the total mechanical energy is conserved. So in losing this um, gravitational potential energy, important to point out that this is a loss in gravitational potential energy which is taking place here, that means that there's going to be a gain in kinetic energy equal to that amount. So we can say half mv squared, that's the kinetic energy at the end of this process, is equal to the gravitational potential energy the start of this process and we'll say that's 11.76. It's fine to use more accuracy during calculation but again we'll make sure that our final answer is uh, just three different figures. Um, okay well that's a half times 0 0.3 because the mass is 0 0.3 times v squared is 11.76 and if I rearrange that for uh, v squared I get 78.4 And so we have V is 8.85 meters per second. So that's the speed of the ball once it's fallen through that distance. So as we just saw then, if um, only gravity is doing work, then mechanical energy is conserved. And we can say that the final mechanical energy is equal to the initial mechanical energy. Uh, but, um, more often than not, in, in the real world, there will be other forces doing work as well. Um, could be air resistance, could be friction, could be other things, driving forces. Um, and so what we actually need is a more general uh, rule, which is the work energy principle. And that says that, yes, the final mechanical energy is equal to the initial mechanical energy, plus any work that is done on the object. Uh, and that work done could be a positive amount or a negative amount, depending on the direction of the forces that are acting on the object as it moves. So a good thing to do in any problem is to take an energy audit. So count up the, the energy um, at the start of the situation and at the end, um, and the difference between those must be the work that's done on the system. So here's an example. Um, a skier slides from rest down a smooth slope, 400 meters long and 30 degrees of the horizontal, and we want to know what her speed is at the bottom of the slope. Now the first thing to notice here is that we're told that this is a smooth slope, uh, and what that means is that there's no friction. Um, so even though there is a force acting on this object, other than gravity, this, this R, this is acting uh, perpendicular to the motion throughout, uh, and so it won't actually be doing any work. Um, so this is a situation where there are no, um, even though there is an external force, there is, there's no work being done by external forces. And so we know that the final mechanical energy will equal the initial mechanical energy. So let's see what those mechanical energies are. 
So firstly, at, at the top of the slope, which is labelled A, um, the skier is at rest, and so the kinetic energy is equal to zero at that point. Um, but she's at the top of a 200 metre high slope. How do I know it's 200 metres high? Well, the slope is 400 metres long. Uh, there's an angle here of 30 degrees. So this h is equal to 400 times the sine of 30, because this side is opposite the 30. So 400 times the sine of 30 degrees. And if you know your trigonometry, you shouldn't even need a calculator for this. The sine of 30 degrees is exactly a half. So 400 times a half is 200. All right, so the height is 200. And so mgh will be m times g times 200. And I'm just going to write that's 200 mg. We're not told the mass. Now you might think that's going to be a problem, but just wait and see what happens. Um, we do know g, but it might be just as easy to keep it in as g until the very end. Saves worrying about rounding or anything like that. Um, okay, so that's what happens at A. Now at B, the kinetic energy is now going to be equal to a half mv squared, where v is the final speed. That's the thing that we're trying to work out. So that's a half mv squared. And the gravitational potential energy, which is now at ground level, okay, we're basically defining this to be the zero point for gravitational energy, so uh, that will now be zero. Now if we apply the conservation of mechanical energy, we can say that uh, half mv squared, which is that kinetic energy, plus zero gravitational potential energy, so that's the final mechanical energy there, is equal to the initial kinetic energy, which, sorry, the initial mechanical energy, which is zero plus 200 mg, And we can then rearrange that to say v squared is equal to 400 g. Notice we can cancel by dividing both sides by m. So even though we don't know the mass, turns out that we don't need to. And then take the square root, putting in g equal to 9.8. That works out as 62.6 meters per second. Now this example continues um, as the ski reaches the bottom of the slope. Uh, now look at this, she's now on rough level ground. So the height is no longer changing, so we don't need to worry anymore about gravitational potential energy. Uh, but because this is rough ground, that means that there's a frictional force, and we're told that that frictional force is 0.25 mg. Uh, now friction always acts against the, the motion, so this skier is travelling to the right, so the friction is acting to the left and it's opposing that motion. That's important later when we think about whether we need a negative sign. Um, and we're going to try to work out how far she travels before she stops. So now we have uh, two positions. We've got position B, which is at the start of this process, and position C here. Um, so uh, at B, the kinetic energy is equal to 200 mg. We know that because that was the um, result of the previous part of the question. We're not worrying about gravitational energy, so that is the, the total mechanical energy there. Um, when she gets over here to C, so this is when we're at the, the final kinetic energy, and because she's come to rest, that kinetic energy is equal to zero. Okay, and the other thing that we need to take into account now is the work done by the friction. Now remember, work done is the force times the distance travelled in the direction of that force. So if the, um, the force is uh, directed against the direction of the motion, then if we're taking that direction of the motion as being positive, then that force is negative 0.25 mg. 
multiplied by this displacement d in that positive direction so that's a positive d okay i could have thought of that the other way around of course i could have thought of, of d as being uh, negative and the focus being positive but it would still give me the same overall result um, so that's work done by friction so let's invoke this work energy principle now well, that says that the final mechanical energy um, which is the mechanical energy when we're here at point C um, which in this case is 0 is equal to the initial mechanical energy which is 200 mg plus work done by external forces and that work done is minus 0 0.25 m g d so again we can do some cancellation here i can divide through by m g and rearrange to get d and we get a value of 800 okay um that's 800 meters please don't confuse that m with the m there for mass which is easily done so the distance travel is 800 meters now, it's worth pointing out that there are two different ways of thinking about the work energy principle, and it's it's useful to see both of them so you can apply whichever one either makes more sense to you personally, or maybe you might find some questions are best dealt with in one way and some are best dealt with another way. Um, so the way that we've been thinking about it so far is this, that the final mechanical energy is the initial mechanical energy plus the work done by external forces, not including gravity. Um, however, if we prefer to, we can keep the gravity out of the situation. Just think about kinetic energy as the thing which um, we're, we're um, auditing. Um, and then we can say that the change in this kinetic energy will be the work done by external forces plus any work done by the weight. All right. So in other words, the total work done by gravity and anything else will give us the change in the kinetic energy. All right, and the final example that we're about to see will show how that could be could have been done that way as well at the end. So here it is. We've got a skier now, mass 60 kilograms. This time they're going down a rough slope, so there is friction acting as the skier travels down the slope. Um, it's the same setup as before, though, in terms of the length of that run being 400 meters and that angle being 30. So we've still got a height of 200 meters. And we're told that the speed at the bottom is 400 meters per second. And we need to work out what the frictional force is. So again, let's, um, let's do an energy audit. So at point A, what do we have? Well, we've got uh, gravitational potential energy. That's mgh. So that is uh, 60 to the mass times g which is the uh, acceleration due to gravity we'll put that in as 9.8 later and the height which is 200 and the kinetic energy is zero because this gear is starting from rest when we get to point b the gravitational potential energy, because we're now at ground level, the gravitational potential energy is zero, and the kinetic energy is a half mv squared, so that's a half times 60 times the speed, which is 40 squared. Now, the other thing which is uh, important to you, of course, is the work done by the friction. All right. Uh, now, the work done by friction, friction always acts to oppose this motion. So as we travel by 400 meters in this direction, that uh, frictional force is acting to oppose that. So the work done by the friction is equal to minus F. F is the size of that frictional force that we're trying to work out multiplied by that distance of 400 meters. So if we think about the um, work energy principle in the original uh, way first, 
So that says that the final mechanical energy is equal to the initial mechanical energy plus the work done by external forces that that's for the final mechanical energy zero zero gravitational energy plus a half times sixty times forty squared, which is the kinetic energy. That must be equal to the initial mechanical energy, which is sixty times g times two hundred for the gravitational zero kinetic plus this work done is minus f times four hundred. And again if we put nine point eight in for g rearrange all of that that works out as f equal to one hundred and seventy four newtons. Now let's just have a look again at what we did there. The way that we did it was like this. We said that the final mechanical energy was the initial mechanical energy plus the work done. But we could have thought about it in a different way, um, which is this, that we could have said that the total work done, so that would include the work done by gravity on the skier and the work done by friction against the skier was equal to the change in the, in the kinetic energy. And if we compare those two uh, formulations, um, it's really obviously mathematically um, equivalent. It's just so there's not actually any difference in terms of what, in, in terms of the maths in the end. It's just a slightly different way of thinking about it. If you prefer to think in terms of kinetic energy only. So that is the end of video 1.5, conservation of energy, and it's the end of the topic work energy and power one, work and energy.